my name's Jake. I'm stationed here in Charlevoix, Michigan. Um, probably close to where you guys are. I'm not really sure, but we got, um, you know, I'm a bosun's mate, second class. Um, um, well, I'm also stationed here in Charlevoix, and I'm a bosun's mate, third class. So, uh, oh, there's another one. We basically, uh, you know, we cover the Lake Charlevoix, Traverse City, Petoskey area. Um, you know, we're conducting search and rescue and law enforcement operations here. Um, if you guys have any, have any questions so far or anything, let me know. You got anything? No, uh, we have a couple of things that we can show. We have a dry suit. We have our LE stuff. LE. Law enforcement stuff. So, take it back. <laughs> so this is our law enforcement belt. This is the stuff that we wear when we go out and do the safety inspections. You guys have ever seen us out there doing that stuff. Keep an extendable baton. In there. Uh, we have a handcuff key, handcuffs, and key gloves for our protection. Um, we've got pepper spray, and then our holster, or our flashlight. <coughs> Elite. Yeah. The suits are And then you had your dry suit. Yep. There's another thing. We kind of we jump in the water and not get wet at all, no matter how cold it is. So, you know, we wear these. Um, keeps us dry, keeps us warm when we're out there on long days, long nights. So, a little bit about our job. We uh, we're um, you know standing by pretty much all hours of the day for search and rescue, and uh, you know if that comes up, uh, we get some pretty pretty wild stuff happens here in Charlotte Boy. As far as uh, the Great Lakes go, we're really busy. Mm -hmm. But there's other units like you can get stationed in Florida, you get stationed in Hawaii, Alaska, um, you know, Puerto, Puerto Rico, Rico, Guam, yep, uh, Bahrain. So over in the Middle East, if that's your speed. But uh, no, so so wow, what made you be here instead of like going to Hawaii? So I wrote down in boot camp my five places were. I think I wrote down Chicago as my number one. Then I wrote down just certain things near my hometown in Illinois. Oh, yeah. Cool. So um, here at Station Charlevoix and pretty much every other small boat station, we've got um, a couple different boats. We've got a 45 here, a 45-foot response boat, and a 29-foot response boat. Um, basically, whenever we need to do training, if we ever feel like going underway, going for a boat ride, checking out our AOR, we have to do that. Um, periodically, we'll just, uh, you know, sign the boat out in the electronic asset log book and, uh, take it out, you know, do what we need to do, do some training, um, we'll explore the AOR a little bit, familiarize ourselves with it, um, uh, search and rescue cases. We can just, you know, go and then sign it out in and out later, you know, so, um, pretty much we can just, if we need to do something, it's a training, like, uh, you want to take that one? Yeah. Training can range from. Uh, doing classes on the computer for 10 to 15 minutes, or it can range to sort of oh, boot camp is uh, eight weeks in New Jersey, Cape May, New Jersey. And it's, it's rough. Um, one of the harder boot camps, putting them all together. And you get a few college credits coming out of it. And once you're out of boot camp is when you get to write down five places you'd like to be. And then hopefully you get one of those five. Yeah. So from there, you know, you're going to go to this basic training. You're just going to get a general, you're going to learn all your customs and courtesies, stuff like that. They're going to get you ready, be a functioning member of the, you know, Coast Guard fleet. From there, you're going to go to your first unit. Um, after, you know, you spend some time there, figure out what you want to do for a, like, you know, pick your rate. Um, you go to your A school. So you go to anywhere from Yorktown, Virginia to Petaluma. To where the heck's ME? Charleston. Yeah. Charleston. Charleston, South Carolina. Um, do you want to be an Airedale? So working on a plane or a helicopter, you'd be in uh, Elizabeth City, yep. um, North Carolina. Um, so, you know, the training really never stops. It's all pretty quick. Usually it's like you're trying to drink water through a fire hydrant um, during the training, but you definitely learn a lot. And mm -hmm. You don't go unprepared. So pretty much the way ranking works is the more time you spend in, the higher you'll climb through the ranks. So um, 
for example, he, he's been in how long? Um, just coming up on two years. So he's coming up on two years, and he's he's an E4 right now. And then the other two of us in your – one's been in for, what, seven? Yeah, coming up on seven. One's been in for seven. He's an E5 right now. Be able to make E6 pretty soon, um, depending on what he wants to do. And then I'm also an E5. A few years out for making E6. But, you know, you spend the time, um, get better at your job, you make rank quicker. And then uh, you can't really – the only way you change your rank is if you – advance or get demoted, which you don't want to get demoted. So, um, and then you can change your job once you're in like your rating. So that's just your job. Rating is your job, ranks your pay grade. Um, you can change your rating once you're in. Uh, it, it can be difficult, but you can do it. So you change that by like your training and your experience? Is that? You're talking about uh, the job or your pay grade? Well, I guess both really, right? Yeah, so your experience, the more experience you get, you're going to you're gonna advance. So you'll take a test for the next pay grade. If you are above the cut and meet the, meet the criteria, you'll advance. Um, it's a, you know, it, it's, it's a pretty good system, I think. So you said you choose, like, your top five places you want to go. Yes. yes. You get, in boot camp, you get a big list of every possible boat, station, and... Anything that you want in the Coast Guard, you just write down five that you would want. Mm -hmm. And, of course, they each have different um, criteria. So, like, right here, we're a, a station. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, there's cutters, which are the big boats. Yep. And when you write those down, the they're called detailers. Those are the people that really send you places. They'll look at what you want, and then they'll compare it to what the Coast Guard needs or where the Coast Guard needs people, and they'll do their best to try to put you close to the places that you wrote down. So there's Some the... Needs of the service takes precedent over where you want it, but that's just kind of how it is. And the, the Coast Guard, yeah, the Coast Guard cutter is like up by Mackinac, right? Is that right? Yes, there's, there's a bunch of cutters. So if you've probably seen the, there's the Red Hull, that's the Mackinac. So that's a nice breaking uh, buoy tender. Then there's also, okay. um, you know, there's a lot of black hulls, which are primarily just, uh, icebreakers. And some of them will do like ace navigation. How much did you do on the, uh, best, what, crystal, this game? The best game you just broke ice. Yeah. So a lot of the, a lot of the cutters on the great lakes will just break ice, but then you can get on, you know, cutters that are in the ocean and they're going to be doing stuff like drug interdiction, migrant interdiction. Riley, if you're, if you need to, if you need a number or figure out another point of interest or a point of contact, you can go to gocoastguard.com. And it'll ask for your area and you can get in contact with an actual recruiter and they can be, they can tell you a lot more stuff than, you know, we can. Or if it's something as simple as doing a, uh, like a tour of the station, I know we're pretty limited right now on what we can do, but we can definitely get you in for a tour that would uh, be what you want. 